Welcome back. Let's dive right in. We're going to start by swapping out our default cube for a model of Suzanne. I'm going to add a subdivision of 1 and Shade Smooth. From here, I'll open a shader editor and we can start working on the material. Add a new material and we're going to be using this principled BSDF. For starters, we're going to come to the roughness and change it to 0.85. We'll also change our viewport to material preview and zoom in so we can see what's going on. We'll make sure that we have Node Wrangler enabled by coming to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and searching for Node Wrangler. You can see it's checked here. And then we'll grab our principled BSDF and hit Control T to add in a series of nodes. The first thing we're going to do is change this UV to generated and plug this into the mapping. And we're going to actually delete this image texture. We don't need it right now. To get the color that we're going to look for, we're going to Shift A, add in a converter color ramp, and we'll plug this into the color. This we're going to keep on linear and we're going to use these zero and one positions. These specific hex keys that I'm using are what I'm going to give for the color because it lets you get the exact numbers. So for the position at zero, we're going to come to hex value and type in BEB4AE. And you can see that's this kind of gray slate color. For the position at one, we're going to again come to the hex values and we're going to type FFEED4. And you can see this is kind of this yellow. And so we have this little gradient from this sort of gray color to this yellow. To control the distribution of the two colors on this monkey head, what we're going to use is a Musgrave texture. So Shift A, Texture, Musgrave, and we'll make sure that we connect our mapping node vector into the vector here. Then we'll bring our height into the factor. We're going to change the Musgrave from FBM to Rigid Multifractal, and we're going to also change up some of these values. For scale, I'm going to use two. For detail and dimension, I'll use five. And then every other value I'll leave as is. The majority of work with the bone texture actually comes from using a bump map, and it works nicely in both Eevee and Cycles. So right now we're in the material preview mode in Eevee, and when we zoom in, you can see obviously right now, Suzanne has no real defining characteristics. In fact, I'm going to increase this subdivision level by one. And from here, we're actually going to start adding bump nodes. So come down, Shift A, Vector, Bump, and in the first bump node, we're going to just connect straight into the normal. We're then going to duplicate this bump node twice. And we're going to connect each normal into the normal of the bump node before it. Now each of these is going to control different aspects of the texture, and we're going to do that with different textures and again with color ramps. So to start, I'm going to just grab all of these nodes here and move them a little further back. In fact, I'm also going to move the texture coordinate further back because I'm going to use it later on. For the first bump node, we're simply going to add a noise texture. We'll put that right here, connect the vector into the vector, connect the factor into the height. Now I'm going to change a number of these parameters. For the scale, I'm going to go with 20. For the detail, I'll go with 10. And for the roughness, I'm going to go with 0.65. This is going to be the underlying porosity of our bone. And as you can see right now, this strength is way too high. So we're going to come to the strength of this first node and change it to 0 0.05. Now this is very subtle, but if you actually zoom in, you can see some of the light interaction right around here. This is giving the initial bump for the bone. For the second bump node, we're going to add the very tiny holes that bone often has. And we're going to do that by adding in another color ramp. We're going to keep this one as white and black, but we're going to grab the white position, i.e. position 1, and we're going to move it all the way back to 0 0.05, keeping it on linear. Take the color, plug it into the height, and then from here, Shift A, add a texture, Voronoi, plug the distance into the factor, connect the vectors, and you can actually see right now on Suzanne's ear, this little hole that has appeared. That is going to be the idea, but we want these holes to be much, much smaller and much more plentiful. So we'll change the scale up to 150. Now on first glance, this doesn't really seem evident, but what we've effectively done is we've actually littered these little tiny holes around the bone. And this is something you'll actually see if you look at different pictures of actual human bones. So this is going to provide those little pores, Throughout, you can increase the number by changing the scale, 
and you can also control the size of these holes by using the color ramp. The strength I think is actually sufficient at one. Now for the last part of this texture, we're going to add in a series of nodes that will essentially create little patches of distortion that sort of raise or lower parts of the bone. They almost give the look of cracks, but they're not quite that, and you'll see what I mean when we build them in. Here we're going to use another color ramp, so we'll just grab this first one, duplicate it, and bring it down. And we're going to change the positions. So with the white one selected, we're going to bring that to just about 0 0.41. And now with the black one selected, we're going to bring that to 0.39. Again, connect the color into the height. And from here, we're going to add a Musgrave texture. This Musgrave texture is going to be set to hetero terrain. We're going to connect the height into the factor, and we're going to change the settings to have a scale of 20, detail of 5, dimension of 5, dimension, not lacunarity, dimension of 5, lacunarity of 2. And you can see these are the patches that I was referring to. Now we want these to sort of flip the other way. To achieve that, we could do one of two things. We could just invert, but the way that I'm going to do it is actually just to change the white and black on the color ramp. So I'll make this one white, and I'll make the position one black. And now you can see we again have that same inset. Now these are a little bit too uniform. I want them to have some curvature and some irregularity in the edge. And the way that I'm going to do that is with this texture coordinate node combined with this mapping node. So I'm going to shift A, add in a noise texture, and I'll connect the generated vector directly into the noise texture. This will be set to a scale of 10, detail of five, and a roughness of 0.75. From here, I'm going to add in a color, mix RGB, change this to multiply, and take the color, and bring it into the color, color number two, and take the mapping node vector socket and bring it into color number one. Then I'll connect the node color into the vector of the Musgrave texture. You can see when that's updated that it's now distorted this quite substantially. I don't want that much distortion, so I'm actually going to drop this down to 0.1. You can see it's much more subtle now. And again, this effect is a little bit too strong, so I'm actually going to take the strength and dial that down as well to about 0.1. And now if we actually zoom in, you can see we've got the underlying roughness, we have the porosity of those little Voronoi texture points, and we also have these nice little patches of irregularity that are created by this Musgrave texture in conjunction with the noise texture. And this is essentially the functional bone texture. If you want to change different aspects of it, like dirt or roughness, you can do that. I personally find a roughness of 0.85 is good. I find shiny bone a little bit unnatural. And again, for the colors, these are cleaner bone. They are meant to be used for more of a demonstration of the actual bones themselves, maybe for medical or biomedical applications. If you wanted something for more of a art piece or something a little bit grungier, you could certainly do that primarily by just changing the color ramp and then keeping all the other bump features. The only thing that's worth noting about this is Blender tends to have a hard time with bump. If you cycle multiple of them together, that also makes it a little bit slow. And so loading this can be a little bit tedious to work with, but it does give a reasonably good effect and it actually looks pretty good when you zoom in. So from here, I'm going to cut away and show you this texture on a final surgical model. And here we have a comparison of our bone texture on the left and a generic principled BSDF on the right. This model of the anatomy of a human skull was created by Hannah Nui and I found it on Sketchfab for educational purposes. Thank you, Hannah, obviously, for making such a fantastic model and making it available for educational purposes. But again, for those who are interested on applying this texture to a bone of some sort, you can see here how it actually looks. And again, I'll move to a bit of a zoomed in shot to get a better sense of how some of these texture elements are playing in. As I mentioned, the problem with this is that it can be very, very intensive for the computer to render. And obviously, these are well-developed models of the skull. So as a consequence, it is quite slow to record, and I can't show this in real time, unfortunately. Again, zooming in very far here, you can now make out the small pores near the area of the mouse. And as well, as I move down, you can actually also see some of those small texture patterns that are created by the bump. 
I'll wrap it up here and show a slow pan over of the actual node setup for those who are interested in duplicating this exactly. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, hopefully use this to go make some figures. If you do, please let me know. You can either tag me on Twitter at CGFigures or at the same handle on Instagram. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.